Well, we don't have free speech in this country. So far, it has cost north of $300,000 in my case against two LGBTIQA plus drag queens. I could not have afforded this, but incredibly generous people, most of whom are not wealthy, donated to my legal defence after I was sued. We won. Without these people, their prayers, and the incredible legal team at the Human Rights Law Alliance, I would be in much bigger trouble. I can't thank them enough. I can't repay them, although I think the drag queens should. I went through this uh, past week thinking I was clear of the 30-day appeal window. Surely a three-year legal ordeal culminating in a three-day trial in a tribunal, which included three hours of cross-examination by a senior counsel, was enough. That case ended with a 78 uh, page decision by QCAT member Jeremy Gordon dismissing the drag queen's complaint and saying that I had acted in good faith and had not vilified them on the basis of their gender or sexual identity. But on Friday last week, uh, late in the evening, just hours before the deadline, Johnny Valkyrie, a woman who presents to little children as a man, and Dwayne Hill, a man who dresses as a hypersexualized woman in front of little children, filed an appeal. The thought of more years of being dragged through tribunals and courts does not thrill me. The process is definitely the punishment. If politicians would do their job, our flawed anti-free speech, anti-discrimination and anti-vilification laws could be easily reformed. Activists with access to taxpayer-funded LGBTIQA plus legal services should not be allowed to sue their fellow citizens because of hurt feelings in a bid to shut down discussion on matters of public importance. They should debate, not litigate. But Labor supports these laws along with most Liberals. So we have lost free speech in this nation. The email signature block from the principal lawyer at the LGBTI legal service who lodged the appeal notice last week was a veritable lesson in woke. It contained the mishmash, uh, rainbow, black lives matter, transgender identity politics flag, along with a link to help learn about pronouns, which were in her case, I think her case, she, they, maybe I've just misgendered, who knows. Uh, the country was of course acknowledged in the email signature and below were another two flags, those of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians. I guess with three flags in one signature block, there was simply no room for the flag of the colonisers, aka the Australian national flag. So I'm sitting down to read more legal documents and wonder how many more years this will take. But it's made me more determined to keep doing what I'm doing, building the Family First political party so we can get women and men elected to parliaments who will fight for freedom, who will fight for life and fight for family. The only way to fix this is to fix the law. The only way to fix the law is to get people into the parliament who will fight every day for freedom, for truth. While we've been sleeping and politicians acquiescing, Activists have been using the tools of democracy in the cause of oppression and lies. It's time we started to pick up these same tools. I hope that what is happening to me and so many others, Kiralee Smith, Councillor Louise Elliott, Sal Grover, Dr Gillian Spencer, just to name a few, will serve as a wake up call. If we don't have free speech, we don't have a democracy and we don't have a free nation. That we have now lost these things will shock many but it has happened. You might not be interested in politics, but if you hold mainstream views, politics is certainly interested in you.